Hello and welcome to the Tom Sawyer Show on the Warrior Sports Network. I'm Grant Wall, joined as always by Winona State head football coach Tom Sawyer and coach Saturday's uh, game up in Mankato. Didn't go the way the Warriors were hoping uh, on the wrong side of a 44-10 decision to the number one team in the country. Um, what, what's your message to the team coming out of a game like this? Well, first of all, um, they're a very good football team. Uh, second thing is that we didn't play very well, and that's a bad combination. So really after the ball game, I was really disappointed in, in, in the effort uh, in some groups. Um, and as overall, we really didn't challenge them to the level that I, that I expected us to. Um, when you go into these big games, that's what we try to condition our players for, is that's we want to play in these games. And we want to play on the road in these big games. I mean, that's something we talk about all the time. And here we had that opportunity. We really didn't show up and do that, and I was—that's something I just don't understand very much. It's kind of I'm crazy that way. But uh, I, I, the message is that you know, in football, when you only get 11 tries, you got to make every one as best you possibly can. And and we got three three games left. That's an opportunity for us to get ourselves back in the bull hunt. Um, we are back in the bull hunt still. Um, we're only a game out of first place in the South. So I mean, it's not like it's the end of the world. Uh, but our message is that you we only have so many chances. It's not like basketball where you get 30 some chances to play. You get 11, and that's it. And now we're down to three. So with our seniors going out and all these young kids with all their experience that they're yearning for, um, it's a chance for us to get right back on the bus and, and go again to Marshall and, and play as hard as we can. You've had a chance to go back and look at the tape and kind of digest what happened on the field. What are some of the positives that you can take out of Saturday's game? Well, I, I think that there, a couple things. I think our, our kicking game was pretty good, although we did have a, a punt return against us, uh, which I was disappointed in. We just didn't want that kid to touch the ball. But uh, Brett Cochran Bray, I know, was on the show today. He play, He's played great. I, you know, you get a freshman kicker in here that's got to kick it in it, you know, either downpours or wind going sideways or something. It's not a very good introduction to college football. But uh, he, was our, he was our player of the week this week uh, and on our special teams, and, and that part was really good. Um, I think that uh, Jack Nelson held himself up. Um, he had to pick himself up too often, um, but, uh, but he did well. He handled that well, and Cameron Johnson played exceptionally well um, in, in that kind of a game. So a freshman receiver, a freshman quarterback, and a freshman kicker um, were guys that I'm very proud of from that week. Uh, Jack and the offense got put in uh, third and long on several occasions uh, on Saturday, and he was able to make some conversions. Uh, and you mentioned Cameron Johnson; he was on the receiving end of a couple of those. Uh, but you have to be able to be, or you have to be pleased uh, at how Jack didn't give up on those third and, and longs, and, and just okay, we're, you know, we're probably gonna have to punt here. But really went down the field, threw the ball well, uh, and moved the sticks a few times. Well, I think he has a real strong trust in the receivers. Uh, you know, Josh Micah didn't play, so it's another one of our top players that didn't play in the football game, but. Um, a chance for other receivers to step up and play well, and, and they did. Uh, Alan May made a couple of great catches. Uh, but, yeah, uh, when you throw the ball up to Cameron Johnson and he goes up in high points, it, not too many guys are going to you know, out-duel him for those 50-50 for those, uh, balls. So um, he played exceptionally well. Uh, Jack threw the ball up and took the chances. We had nothing to lose, and I kept the six moving a, a few times. Um, not enough, but uh, a few times. Let's move forward now. Uh, let's look forward to this Saturday game at Southwest Minnesota State. You mentioned you're only a game back in the South Division, still in the bowl hunt. Uh, how do you get the guys ready to go after a game like Saturday for a game in Marshall this weekend? Well, I really think it's a test of our character and our program uh, philosophy that uh, you know we don't we didn't play well last week. Um, there's no excuse for coming out and not wanting to play well this week. Uh, so um, our kids need to be angry. They need to be frustrated. They got, need to be uh, feeling disappointed for the Mankato game. All that should fuel us uh, getting on the bus and wanting to play well because Southwest is a very good offensive team. They're giving up a bunch of points, but um, they're very explosive. So uh, very similar to Sioux Falls, or very similar to um, well, all the way through the league. And so, but they're very, very good, and they run the ball well. They throw the ball well. So we got to do a good job offensively, keeping that our defense off the field. But we got to go there, be explosive, and go there to win the football game. And everybody has to have the same mindset. Uh, defensively, you mentioned that Southwest uh, has a really good offense. You know, they're putting up over 500 yards per game on average. Um, you know, and we talk about this on you know almost every week. It seems like every team in this league has a great and explosive offense. What do you have to do to slow down this particular one? Well, you got to stop the run. Uh, they have the top running backs in the country right now in, in, in rushing yards, and and you think about you know explosive offenses. Well, you got to know how they're doing it, and they're they're doing it with a running back and. And they're throwing the ball to five different guys that have more than 30 catches. So they're spreading it around, very similar to what we do. Um, but uh, uh, we have got to stop this, this short passing game and control the run. If we do that, we'll make them punt it a few times. 
Uh, we feel like the matchup uh, with our offense versus their defense is something that we should have the advantage of if we, if we play well. Um, so those two things together um, are things that we got to do to control the game. Uh, and offensively, what's going to be your key going forward? Um, not turning the ball over, uh, converting on third downs, and uh, we got when we get in the red zone, we got to score. We're, we're averaging, <clears throat> you know, we're up in the 87th percentile, or whatever, scoring uh, in the red zone. So we just got to get there, um, and we got to work on burning some clock up along the way, and uh, so we don't get into that hundred plays um, kind of a thing with the, with the offenses that we've been playing. So if we can keep in the 70s, even 80s, uh, it seems like a, an easier game for us. It's going to be a fun <coughs> one on Saturday in Marshall, the Warriors and the Mustangs. Uh, on the, the Warriors on the road. It's a 1 o'clock kickoff. Uh, we're going to go back one last time, though, to the Warriors game in Mankato on Saturday. Take a look at the highlights right after this. Coach, let's take a look at the highlights from the Warriors game against Minnesota State last Saturday. We're going to start off here. This is a third and long for Jack Nelson. Nice completion. Well, you can see he had all kinds of pressure on him up front, even on a three-step drop. We didn't protect him very well all day, but when he threw it up, Cam Johnson seemed to be uh, the guy who's going to go get it, and uh, he did a great job. Mm -hmm. Cam made some really, really tough catches in traffic throughout the game on Saturday. Now the Warriors on defense, Minnesota State trying to run the football, not getting anywhere, forcing a fumble and recovering it are the Warriors. Yeah, Terrell Foster ended up with the ball out, and uh, you know, guys just staying after the, the um, ball. You know, they're down the scoring territory. We took the ball away, and uh, you know, we didn't do anything with it on that particular drive. But it's something that we we've really prided ourselves on. The defensive side is, is stripping the ball, and there's a great example of it. Yep, yeah, Matt Spawn was the one who reached in and was able to knock that ball out. Now here, Warriors on defense, trying to run outside and not going anywhere. Yeah, here's a redshirt uh, sophomore, actually, Jared Wood. Uh, is he a freshman, redshirt freshman? Yep, redshirt yeah, freshman. Richard, another freshman kid making a play. You'll see it out into your left side here. Um, he comes off the block, makes, runs the kid down, and, uh, and makes a tackle for a loss. That's a great play. Again, Warriors on defense trying to throw downfield, and Palazar's not letting him have it. No, he did a nice job, you know, staying on the routes and scrambling, and actually we should have picked the ball. We went for a pick and missed it, but uh, Pat got him cleaned up. And you'll see that down here at the bottom of your screen, number 31. Here it is, some pressure up front. Forces a quarterback to roll out and throwing one up that uh, could have been picked, but Palazar makes a great play to knock the ball out. Yeah, he really did. He's athletic back there, and he's got a few picks on the air. Again, trying to run the ball up the middle, and this time met by a host of Warriors. Yeah, for the most part during the game, we did a nice job against the run. Uh, you know, quarter they each got loose a couple times, but uh, when we do things right, uh, we can stop anybody in the league. When we don't, um, they turn into big plays. So uh, in this particular play, you can see a whole host of guys right there to shut that down. Again, trying to run the football uh, is, is their quarterback, who's a very elusive guy, but just not able to go anywhere on this play. Yeah, Wolf has put on about 25 pounds. He's a big, strong kid. He's a senior. He's motivated, and, uh, and it takes two or three guys to bring him down sometimes. Warriors on offense, a little play action, getting some room down the field. What we needed is time. Uh, when, when Jack Nelson has time to throw it, he can find anybody. And another great catch here uh, by Cameron Johnson, just a freshman for the Warriors. You see it here, play action. Jack has that time in the pocket, rifles one downfield that Cam Johnson comes up with. Now we'll see here, Jack showing a little bit of elusiveness going deep down the field to Tony Mueller. Yeah, I mean, just stepped out of that. Uh, we knew we were trying to get the ball out quick. The kid wasn't open right away, so he had to escape. And, and you know, he threw it 65 yards running the other way. Uh, it's a pretty big play. Now here, sets up a touchdown pass to Alan May. Yeah, Jack was very patient there on the slant. Uh, you could see him set his foot in the ground, and he threw a dart back to the backside of the end zone that uh, Alan May caught diving. It was a great, great play, great pass and catch. Now the Warriors here on defense trying to run the option is Minnesota State not able to get anywhere. Well, you can see our tackling wasn't great on the day, but a big play here by Toby Frisbee, number 99, the right side of your screen, fighting off that zone block, running the quarterback down for the first hit, and we got to do a little bit better job cleaning it up, but uh, Toby did a nice job in that play. Again, a connection between Jack Nelson and Alan May down the sideline. Yeah, those two guys really have a good feeling for each other. Like we said, you know, Josh wasn't playing, um, so it became the Alan May and, and Cameron Johnson show. And here, Jack Nelson again, getting away from a defender, gets one down the sideline to Chichi Ojika. Now the Warriors back on defense here, stretching out uh, an option play. Well, that's what it should look like. You've got to get off blocks out there on the perimeter, and, and as he made, throws the pitch, uh, guys are running it down. We got off blocks, made the first contact behind the line of scrimmage, and, 
That's what it should be. That's what it should look like. Well, those are the highlights from Saturday, Coach. When we come back here on the Tom Sawyer Show, going to sit down with Winona State kicker Brett Cochran Bray. Hello and welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show here on the Warrior Sports Network. I'm joined now by kicker Brett Cochran Bray. And Brett, uh, you're a freshman playing your first season of college football. Uh, eight games in, what's it, what's it been like so far for you? It's been, well, the first few games it was kind of rough for me, uh, getting used to uh, the college game environment. But uh, the last four or five games, it's I've really settled down. Uh, I felt like I've been more poised. Um, kicking field goals and PATs, and um, I think I've kind of set it in a groove now that um, it's a good groove. Uh, you mentioned you're in a groove, uh, and it's definitely shown that on the field. I think you're right at 30 consecutive extra point attempts made. Um, you've made your last three field goal attempts. Um, what's allowed you to become more comfortable on the field? Is it just getting reps or just kind of getting more familiar with the game? Um, both of that, getting reps, that always helps with uh, practice, keeping everything the same, and then uh, really trusting the guys in front of me, trusting Ian, trusting Jeremy, um, and just doing my part, and just knowing that everyone else on the line will do their part, and I just have to kick it through. Uh, last year at this time, you were still playing high school football in the state of Iowa. Um, what's, the, what's the biggest difference or the biggest change you've had to make coming now and playing college football? In high school, uh, you're able to use a block when you kick, and really the transition uh, from kicking a block to kicking on the ground was a big deal for me. And uh, it took me about a year to kind of get it down, and I think it's been going pretty you, well. You so feel far. like you've got it yeah. down right now? Yeah. Um, when you go out on the field, obviously you kind of have the same routine each time um, to get to your same spot. But what do you try to think about and what rolls through your mind when you're getting ready to take a kick? Um, really, I just want to keep a clear mind. Uh, kind of, I usually take a few deep breaths just to settle my nerves. And really, after that, it's just repetition. So, yeah. just try, just trying to do the same thing over and yeah, over and yeah. over again. Yeah. Um, now. Once once you get out there, um, you know what's what's it like when you have those guys? The offensive line is obviously blocking for you, uh, but you have eleven defenders coming at you. Uh, how hard is it to kind of close that off and not think about that? The first few games it was really hard doing that because I was I was just everywhere. But uh, uh, I just grown to trust the ten guys in front of me, and um, they've been doing a great job these past few games and no one's really been it close so yeah it's been pretty pretty nice now you're, you're a freshman this is your first go around here in the NSIC uh, so we'll kind of get a fresh perspective on this you've been on a few road trips so far uh, what's been your favorite place to go play so far this year um, probably Sioux Falls even though that was probably the worst game to kick in uh, with the wind but uh, just winning that game, it was a big game, it was their homecoming, it was a big crowd, and uh, I kicked well there, made a field goal, made all my PATs, and uh, it was just a it was just a great win, and everybody was ecstatic, so it was awesome. Tell me about your pregame um, routine, you know, you, you see the specialists come out a little bit early, get their kicking in, um, you know, when the rest of the team gets down there, they obviously kind of go through some of their plays, run some some routes, things like that. You're off on your own. Mm -hmm. What's your routine like before a game? Um, after getting my kicks in and when every all the offense and defense are doing their thing, it's really just trying to get my mind right. Um, trying to get uh, my nerves calmed down and just trying to get loose and uh, staying connected with what's going on. So. Well, hopefully this coming Saturday game at Southwest Minnesota State, hopefully you'll be trotting on quite a bit for some extra points. Yeah. Hopefully the Warriors get in the end zone and you get a big leg workout kicking those extra points. We will be right back here on the Tom Sawyer Show right after this.
Welcome back to the Tom Sawyer Show. Join now, Winona State co-offensive coordinator Cameron Keller and, and coach uh, Saturday's game at Minnesota State obviously didn't go the way you wanted it offensively. Um, but it was still a game, saw a lot of really good things out of a true freshman quarterback in Jack Nelson. Yeah, obviously we're uh, pretty disappointed in the way that we played overall as an offense, I think. You know, the last few years that we kind of limped into the Mankato game. Um, and this year we really felt like we were clicking on all cylinders and this was going to be the the best chance we had to go out and put on a performance that, that we felt like we'd owed it to ourselves, that we'd, we'd earned the right to go out and do some things. And um, it just didn't go our way. And, you know, there's a, a, a lot of reasons for that. But, you know, if you uh, if you coach long enough, you, you do everything you can to try to take the positives out of those things. And, and we don't like to look for moral victories around here. We're not built that way. But at the same time, we do have a, a lot of good things to be happy about with our freshman quarterback and the, the, some of the things he's doing and we'll continue to build from there. What are, what are some of those positives that you can take from uh, the game against Mankato? Well, I think the thing for him that he proved to everybody, and I, I don't know that there was ever any doubt leading up to it, but he took one of the worst beatings that I've ever seen a, a college quarterback have to endure, and he never missed a snap. And that's something that everybody around him knew what was going on. I think they were aware of it. Uh, the coaches were aware of it. And uh, for him to be able to show that kind of toughness as an 18-year-old kid to go up against a defense like that, that uh, put pressure on him all day. And, you know, we didn't do a good job of protecting him, but at the same time, he he didn't come off to the side and complain. Um, uh, you know, and, and I played the position. I I probably would have yelled a few times at some old linemen, and he did. And, and I think for him to show his poise and still be able to stand in there and complete over 50% of his balls in a day that was, was pretty windy. Um, and with the pressure that he had in his face, I think those are things that we can build on. We had you on the show a few weeks ago. Uh, I think it was after Jack's first start. We're now a few more weeks down the road. What have you seen and how have you seen him mature at the quarterback position? Well, we're starting to get him to recognize a few more things. I think the first few weeks, you know, we, w we just wanted him to go out and play and, you know, just be a kid in the schoolyard and, and throw the ball around. And um, he's starting to really understand what we're trying to do now. And, and there were some things on Saturday that I think in our run game he missed some checks. And, and when we went back and watched the film on Sunday, he recognizes those things. And so we're starting to get him to where he, he really understands what we're trying to do. He just doesn't go out and throw the ball down the field and, um, and hope that somebody's there. He, he knows what he's looking at, um, and, and he's able to recognize those things. And so I think from a development standpoint, he's, he's definitely farther along than, than we had expected. Um, he's still got some things that, that we need to get cleaned up and continue to get better with. but. Um, definitely as far as laying the foundation for the rest of his career, I think we're, we're off to a good start. Saturday's game in Mankato aside, uh, let's talk about kind of the offense as a whole. Uh, and it's been a year where, uh, where explosive plays have, have really ruled the day for the Warriors, uh, getting big chunks of yardage. Um, obviously, Jack's ability to throw the ball deep helps with that. Uh, but it's been a really explosive offense that you've been able to put on the field. Well, I think that you know one of the things we've been lucky enough to have here for, for a long time is a good running game. And any time that you can run the football successfully, you're going to be able to dictate what defenses do to you. And you're going to be able to put their, their back half in situations that they're not completely comfortable with because they have to come up and support the run. And, you know, we've done a nice job in our play action game of getting some guys um, open down the field. And, and obviously, we're able to protect him, give him some time to throw, and he's able to make those hits. But um, we got to get better running the football. And, you know, that's something that we're going to continue to focus on. Um, we've been pretty inconsistent with it, and we got to continue to get better with it. Hopefully some of those explosive plays will start to come from the run game and not just the pass game. And that's, that's really going to be our big focus this week. Uh, the main cog in that run game has been Chichi Ojika, a guy who um, was mostly just in the return game the three years prior to this, uh, but has stepped into that starting running back position and has played really, really well throughout the season. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's been Chichi understanding that the, the skill sets we were utilizing a few years ago um, kind of had to change. For him to be the guy, the things that we do offensively, he had to be able to run inside the tackles a little bit more and be the guy that can, can have a little more wear and tear on your body. And I think he's really accepted that challenge. Um, he's, he's still got you know some work to do in the pass protection game, but I think he'll tell you that. It's every, every running back wants to be the guy running the ball, and you know they hope they don't have to be in there when we're throwing it, so they protect it. But it, he's done a really nice job of understanding what we're doing. Um, but yeah, the, the things that he's been able to do definitely give us a nice little spark. Uh, and it's been just a very, very impressive uh, season from the wideout position, a very, very young position, just like quarterback. Uh, you have sophomores and freshmen who are getting most of the reps at that, at that spot. Um, you have to be excited about the, the future when you have a freshman quarterback who's playing as well as he is and throwing to two, basically two sophomores and a freshman at wide receiver. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a little bit hard to believe that they're, that they're as young as they are. And 
And I think sometimes I take that for granted and I, I have to continue to make sure that I coach them in a way that, that they are getting the knowledge every day that uh, the things we need to continue to get better with. I think sometimes we, we look at them and we just assume they've been here for four years and then that's not the case. There's still a lot of things that they need to work on and some, li some, fine thing, some little things that we need to fine tune. Um, but the way that they're playing for young guys is, is very impressive and it's something that I think can keep us excited for, for a few years to come. Southwest this coming Saturday on the road. Uh, they have an explosive offense. You have an explosive offense. What's the key to walking out of Marshall with a win on Saturday? We got we got to do a better job offensively moving the chains. I think that uh, you know where where we go into these games and we talk a lot about how many points we can score and the explosive plays. We need to get better on third downs and we need to help our defense out by keeping them off the field. Southwest can't score if they're not on the field and. That's going to be a huge point of emphasis for us this week is to be able to to grind out some third downs, move the chains when we need to, and keep our defense off the field. And you know, if we can keep Southwest to where they're only running 70 or 80 plays a game, we're going to be able to do the things that we need to do to win a football game. And that's something that our offense has to continue to to harp on. We have to continue to focus and get better with. And hopefully, if we can get that done on Saturday. We'll, we'll be able to get the W. Well, it should be a fun one on Saturday in Marshall. The Warriors taking on Southwest, Southwest Minnesota State. It's a one o'clock kickoff. Uh, that you can hear on 89.5 KQAL. That's all the time we have for this week's episode of the Tom Sawyer Show. For everyone here at the Warrior Sports Network, thanks for watching.